to the Golden State, where California's Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis has announced her run to succeed Governor Gavin Newsom, whose term is up in 2026. And if elected, Kunalakis would become California's first female governor. And she joins us now. Lieutenant Governor, good to see you, and thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so the race for governor isn't until 2026. Why now? Why are you making the announcement? Well, California is a very big state, and I think anyone who wants to run for governor, it's a good idea to start early because um, it's so important to go from every part of the state of California talking uh, to voters. And um, certainly, if you want to break a glass ceiling, it helps to start early. And let's talk about that glass ceiling because you're the first woman to hold the lieutenant governor's job. If you win the governor's seat, you would be the first woman to have that job. How does that factor into your decision making here? You know, I think some people are actually surprised that California has never had a woman governor, especially because we're first in so many things. So people are excited about it. Um, but the fact of the matter is that the fight for women's rights across the country has really heated up. In California, we're working hard to protect women's rights. I've been leading the effort. We changed the California Constitution last year to enshrine a woman's right to choose, uh, to access reproductive care and birth control. So um, all of this together, I think, uh, makes it the right time. And um, ultimately, people care about the issues. As lieutenant governor, I've been fighting for those issues, and I'll keep doing it over the next few years as we get closer to 2026. Well, lieutenant governor, I live in California, and it's no secret that reparations has been a part of the conversation for decades now. Uh, governor Newsom making headlines today declining back reparations checks. Uh, if you are elected governor, what do you plan to do about that? Well, thank you for asking, and this has certainly made headlines, but, you know, reparations are something that we've done in this country. Um, California had a large segment of our Japanese community, um, which under Ronald Reagan's presidency was given reparations for internment during the Second World War. Germany paid reparations to uh, to Jews who suffered from the Holocaust. So, um, so the fact that we have this commission, that we're beginning the process to really quantify uh, the economic impact that slavery has had on the African-American community. This is an important part of the conversation, and California does not shy away from hard problems and, and, and these kinds of conversations. A conversation a lot of people are having right now is just how they're going to feed themselves and mm -hmm. keep a roof over their head. California's economy is the fifth largest in the world. What do you think needs to be done to protect that economy and to make sure it continues to grow while also dealing with the fact that everything is costing more right now? Well, that's very true. Um, the cost of living in California is high, and it's largely driven by housing. And that's largely driven because people want to live here. So uh, the governor, Governor Gavin Newsom, has been working on these issues, bringing innovative solutions. Um, the power of our economy can help. Uh, but these challenges are going to go on. And, you know, my story factors in. I'm the daughter of an immigrant from Greece. My father started out as a farm worker. He worked as a waiter in the governor's mansion. And so this is the character of our state, one where people have come from around the world looking to build a better life for their families. But we've always been a place of opportunity. That's what the California dream is all about. And so tackling these issues are, are things that are very important, important to our state. Uh, and I'll be working very hard on those as lieutenant governor and God willing in the future as governor. And affordable housing, also a, a big issue there. You know, the homeless population and the state of California is one of the largest ones. I think I've heard every single argument for fixing the problem when it comes to homelessness. What is your solution? So for a long time, um, these issues were really dealt with at the local level. And what has happened over the last few years, again, with budget surpluses coming out of COVID in California, is really targeting the efforts at the state level to deal with these challenges. A big part of it is building more housing. 
But this is also a mental health crisis. It's also a crisis of drug addiction. And so state programs are now put in place to help target and to help um, deal with these challenges. Here in San Francisco, uh, the uh, California Highway Patrol has been brought in to help, uh, to help as well. So we recognize that we have a challenge. It's one that is very much top of mind for Californians and for all of our elected officials to work together to bring more resources, to deal with this challenge for what it is, again, mental health crisis, drug addiction, lack of housing, and to work together to tackle it in a, in a meaningful and innovative way. But is there an immediate fix? I mean, even when you look at the city of L.A. and the surrounding areas, more than 60,000 people are homeless. More than 60,000. That's bigger than some cities. That's correct, and that's a testament to the fact that this is a challenge that's been growing uh, for many, many years. Uh, the difference is the resources that are being brought to the issue. You know, we, during, uh, during COVID, had a project that we got funding from the federal government for to put people in housing. It was called Project Home Key. A project room key, sorry, and now uh, we've converted that into something called Project Home Key. We are putting tens of thousands of more people into housing units, uh, but it takes time to be able to really see that meaningful difference. Uh, we are making progress, but it will take time. All right, Lieutenant Governor, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.